Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our weekday devotional, Grandfather's Box, um, where we're taking little breaks from the box itself, and we are exploring uh, what's known as the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Um, Matthew uh, 5, Jesus kind of goes through this sermon, exploring what it looks like to be in relationship with each other. Matthew 6, Jesus talks about what it looks like to grow in our faith, spiritual disciplines, as we call them in the church. Um, Matthew 7, Jesus almost seems to continue on in this, and he talks about what it looks like to mature as a believer in Christ, to uh, areas that perhaps we are maturing in or ways that we need to develop as Christians. And it's really great because in this scripture, Jesus actually gives us a really wonderful tool, something I really enjoy, um, to help us understand and to recognize mature Christians versus Christians who perhaps aren't maturing or even are choosing not to mature uh, in the moment. But this gives us a wonderful tool for discernment, for our own personal reflection and growth, and to uh, to teach us uh, how to find other believers that are growing in their faith and seeking to grow. He, he says in Matthew chapter 7, uh, verses 15 through 20, he says, Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruits. That is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from a thorn bush or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit. A bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. That's Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20. You see, a few days ago, we talked about the idea of being known by our reputation. We said that it's important that we don't get so wrapped up in our reputation that becomes our identity that we're overly concerned and consumed with what people think about us. I mean, just yesterday, we talked about the fact that sometimes we need to be uncultural, that we need to live by the morals of God, not the world. But at the same time, what our reputation really is, is it's what we're known by, what people know us for. People will grow to the point that they can um, even anticipate some of your actions or reactions, and you grow to anticipate theirs. This, in itself, is, in essence, a large part of your reputation. And we talked about the fact that we need to be able to rely on other people's reputation in the same way that we need to be able to rely on our own. What what I mean by that is, if somebody's acting out of character, they're just not acting like themselves. They're more angry, edgy, short with you. And instead of jumping to the, the inward conclusion, why are they mad at me? What's wrong with me? Why, why are they taking this out on me? We look at their reputation. That golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And we ask, okay, wait a minute, I know this person. This is not like them. So, what's happening in their life? Well, what's causing them to act or react this way? This, this isn't normal for them. And what this does is it, it, it shifts gears from fearfulness to compassion. We need to trust their reputation. We need to trust that this isn't like them. What's going on? Maybe they need to talk. Maybe they need some space. Maybe something very painful just happened. Or maybe just like the rest of us, they're just having an off day. 
nine times out of ten, it really isn't about us. It's about something else happening in their life. In the same way, we need to let our reputation speak for itself. We don't need to over-explain ourselves. We, we don't need to go on and on and on about how we say we're going to do this and try to tell stories that really build up only us showing off. Um, when there's a misunderstanding that we will live in such a way that we hope our friends and family will allow our reputation to speak for itself, that our fruits, who we are, the way we act, will explain us. Well, at the same time, there is a flip side to these fruits. For all we've talked about so far is good fruit. We've talked about people we can trust, people that we love, and people that have shown themselves in their way they live to be people we can make certain positive assumptions about. The problem is we live in a broken world, a sinful world. And there are people out there that when we look at their reputations, it's cause for concern. There are people out there in great positions. There are people out there that are leaders in churches. For some odd reason, the people who feel like they need to demand the most authority end up trying to fight their way into positions of authority. I've seen on more than one occasion where somebody in the church, the first one to raise their hand to be in charge isn't always the one that you want in charge. Because they're trying to make sure things are only done their way. And they're not interested in compromise, working together, teamwork, and building up the kingdom of God. You see, this is important for us to understand because some people can look very, uh, as we shall say, pious. Pious means that we're reflecting the teachings of Jesus, that we live in such a way that, that we are reflecting him. Some people can look very good and kind, but their actions don't show it. They talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk, you know? And so as Jesus uses the example that grapes cannot be pulled from thorn bushes, figs from thistles, so good trees will be known by their good fruit, bad trees by their bad fruit. And sometimes, sometimes people that aren't as healthy in our lives, they can be seen by their actions, but their words say something else. That they have the right words to say. And they hold the right positions. And they can even rally the right people around them. But when we step back from that, and we say, set all that aside for a minute. Let's look at how they act, how they respond. Do they show love? Do they seek to live by God's disciplines themselves? Do they show compassion as he does? Do they show a want for his kingdom to grow out of just a sure love? I think that's the definer. That's what Jesus has given us here is he's given us a very clear tool that, that no matter how good people are at speaking or not speaking, Sometimes it's the silent person who never speaks who's the one who has the strongest heart of love. And we need to be aware of these things. Our world today is so polarized. Our, our culture, our, our, our nation is so polarized right now. Rather, it's concerns about this world. Rather, it's concerns about politics. Whatever the side of the coin that you struggle with, I'm not here to tell you what to believe or not believe. What I'm telling you is look at people's character. That's what Jesus says. Let us be known by our fruits, what we produce. This, this is what should guide us one way or the other, especially in such a polarized, diversifying time. In the same way, let us be known by our fruits. For there are some people who come in in sheep's clothing, and all they're there to really do is devour the sheep. They're there to eat up the resources themselves. 
And once they've used it up, they move on to the next flock. And, but there are others of us that all through our lives, we go back and forth. We need to be careful not to fall into the negativity of producing bad fruit, of reproducing bad fruit. You see, it was pointed out to me not too long ago um, in a Facebook post, of all places. If you take a rotten orange and put it up against a good orange, and then you were to take another good orange and set it away, the good orange that's up against the rotten orange will go bad much quicker because it spreads. So the question is, what are we allowing to spread into our lives? We've said before, you become what you're around. If you ever watch horror flicks enough, you, you start to think a little more paranoid. Um, every creak in the house kind of bugs you a little bit more and worries you. If you're around people enough that tell perverse jokes, uh, your mind will start thinking that way. That's bad fruit. And it produces bad fruit. So the questions we must ask ourselves. Number one, when we're not sure about somebody, use Jesus' advice. Look at their actions. What kind of fruit are they producing? Number two, what kind of fruit are we producing in our own lives? And number three, what kind of fruit are we allowing to be produced by others in us? These are three questions. I hope that they help you. I hope that they may even challenge you. And after we're done with this devotion, as I try to every time, I'll sit with this as well and let it challenge me and reflect on this. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much for this great tool that just cuts through the baloney of this world. Very clear, simple, precise to the point. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to use this as a tool of discernment. A tool of discernment in the world, within ourselves, and within around those that we allow ourselves to be surrounded by. We pray, Lord, that you teach us what it looks like to be the good fruit for others and to fight to let good fruit into us. We ask this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I love you. Stay safe. God's peace. And I'll see you tomorrow.